Thank you. Better to be deprived of food for three days than tea for one. Chinese proverb. Come and share a pot of tea. My house is warm. My friendship's free. Emily Barnes. Make tea, not war. Monty Python. <laughs> Everybody loves tea. When I was younger and I wasn't feeling well, my mother would give me tea, and then I'd feel much better. For hundreds of years, tea was for medicinal purposes only. And then the British discovered it, and they realized that having tea is like having a picnic indoors. And I believe it was Sting who said, I don't take coffee, I take tea, my dear. Tea is the quintessential olive branch. And tea was actually introduced in Russia by the Chinese government as a gift to Tsar Alexis in the 1600s. Tea knows no borders. Tea is love universally. Now, tea in America became popular in the 1800s. And green tea was very popular here. And then by World War II, you couldn't get tea in America. And so America started importing tea from India, black tea. And since then, black tea is the most popular tea in the world. Tea can change everything for us. Tea can solve all of our problems, TEA. Technology, education, and acceptance. Without all three of the aforementioned pillars in place, we can't move forward as a society. Without technology, education, and acceptance are wasted resources. Without education, technology, and acceptance are wasted resources. And without acceptance, we move back to the dark ages. So as we look to design our futures, if we need to move forward, we need to embrace all three of these items. And I'm incredibly excited about the future. If we embrace tea, again, we will solve all problems. Now, at the root of this secular growth shift is the primary catalyst of cloud computing. And I'll explain what I mean by this. In 2005, Amazon created something called Amazon Web Services, which is the most important technology platform the world has ever seen. And Jeff Bezos cut the pricing point of Amazon Web Services more than 50 times since 2005. Now, if we compare and contrast this with Microsoft Windows, Microsoft only cut the pricing point of Windows three times going back to the 1980s. And so what's happened is a lot of companies have been running all of their technology processes off of Amazon Web Services. And these companies wouldn't exist today if it wasn't for it. What does this mean for education? Well, these technology companies would not exist today. They wouldn't be profitable. These charities wouldn't even exist if it weren't for cloud computing or commensurate offers, or services like Amazon Web Services. And so I believe that capitalism and deflation can fix education. Now let's go back to the 1980s. Everybody loves the 80s, right? And probably the most important event of the 1980s was the fall of the Berlin Wall. A barrier came down. And one of my fondest memories of the 1980s was when the late, great Ronald Reagan gave the most empowering speech. And he went off script. And he said a couple of words that changed the world. He said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And the wall came down. And it was Alan Greenspan at the time that said the reason we had such incredible, prosperous economic growth in the 1990s without inflation and with low interest rates was because this barrier came down. And when the Great Wall fell, pardon me, sorry, the Berlin Wall fell, what happened was you had a lot of very intelligent and well-educated Eastern uh, European labor moving west, right? And that kept inflation in check. There are significant issues when we build walls. In 1948, in Berlin, allied nations had to fly literally 200,000 planes over Berlin and drop basic necessities, food and water. Well, I believe that another basic necessity is the right to education as well. And I'm worried that as more people get access to online education, more firewalls will be built. We're building more walls. There's a solution to this. I'll talk about it in a couple minutes. Okay, 
I've taken you, taken you to the 80s, let's now go to the 90s, which was another great decade. And because the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, the top earners in the 1990s were traders, bond traders and equity traders. And I think that teachers are going to be the bond traders of the future. I think that teaching is the most scalable business model there is out there. Think about it. If you're a doctor or, God forbid, a lawyer, you can treat one patient at a time. If you're a teacher, you can teach students in over 190 countries at the same time. It's scalable. And so a lot of people want to teach, a lot of government officials, business executives. But quite often they say, I'll teach later in my career. And what they're not saying is they can't make enough money doing it. And I love teachers because teachers are very passionate about what they do. They don't do it for the money. And that's a beautiful thing. But now everybody can teach, right? You've got the economic incentive in place. And so in the future, there's going to be many, many more people with practical skills that will be teaching. And so there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and it's about time teachers get compensated. And so I'm very excited to be part of this movement. So get ready for the multi-decade ed tech secular growth opportunity. Now, I've talked a bunch about the teacher. I want to talk about the student now. What a great time to be a student. You get access to all this incredible stuff online at very low prices. And the amazing thing now about being a student or a child in the middle of almost every continent is you've got more power in your cell phone. You got more access to information and faster access to information than Bill Clinton did in the 1990s. And one of these cell phones or smartphones today has more processing power than every single computer in the world in 1969 that was used to put the first person on the moon. And there's two billion of these things. How could you not be excited about this? And so the platform that we'll use for students going forward in the future is, of course, mobile. And the future is now. It's time. It's time for the democratization of education. A cup of tea is a cup of peace, Shositsu Zen. Every single problem in the world can be solved with ed tech. Every single problem without exception. And I want to urge our politicians in Washington and everywhere in the world to wake up and realize, respectfully, that if we're going to progress as a society, we need to understand that education fixes all problems. And th the problem with Washington and Wall Street and business in general is everybody is so short-term focused. And because everyone's so short-term focused, I'm afraid we might move back to the dark ages. If we were long-term focused and we looked at education as a solution to all problems, we as a society would progress. And so I've taken you to the 90s. I've taken you to the 80s. We're going to skip the 70s because the 70s was a drag. And we're going to go back to the 60s. And I love JFK. I mean, this guy was so long-term focused. His administration created the Peace Corps. And the Peace Corps did a lot of wonderful things all over the world. He was very long-term focused. And so peacecorps.org has done a lot of good. And I challenge our politicians to create a commensurate platform called globaledtechcorp.org. And I just checked, and that website is available in case they want to register it. <laughs> if this is coffee, please bring me some tea. But if this is tea, please bring me some coffee. Abraham Lincoln. Wouldn't it be dreadful to live in a country where they didn't have tea. Professor Herb Meiberger. <laughs> one child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. This was said by my hero, a young Pakistani woman who changed the world through one brave act. She also had this to say, let us pick up our books and our pens. They were the most powerful weapons. And then something tragic occurred on October 9th, 2012. Malala was shot. She was shot for demanding 
equal rights to education for women. She stood up for human rights. God bless her. And I think this day, October 9, 2012, should be made a global holiday, every year in every country, so we can observe the importance of education in improving society. Now, what Malala did was she embraced education and she embraced acceptance. Imagine what we can do if she embraces technology as well and adds it to her repertoire. What would result is peace and love in every country, in every city, in every house in the world. It takes one person to stand up and change the world. One person. I don't believe in sending troops overseas to fight wars we can't win or understand. I believe society can change from within. And Malala is one person. I think we're going to get to a point where there's thousands and millions of Malalas rising up, using YouTube and using technology to change the world from within. This can happen if we allow it to. And so we all have the right to water. Nobody owns it. We all have the right to air. We all have the beautiful right of freedom of religion. We can coexist together. But there's one more thing I think that's just as important as these three aforementioned fundamental rights, and that's the right of unfiltered education for everybody, globally. Thank God for tea. What would the world do without tea? How did it exist? I'm glad I was not born before tea. Reverend Sidney Smith. Come, let us have some tea and continue to talk about happy things. Rabbi Podok. I want to talk about tea and government. I want to talk about tea and humanitarian efforts. I want to talk about tea and Facebook. A lot of people don't realize that Mark Zuckerberg had a big part to play with the Arab Spring. My heroes that started the Arab Spring include Walid and Jawad Nabulsi, who's a good friend as well. And what happened was Walid and Jawad and their friends, they created a Facebook group pro-human rights. And at that time, you're only allowed to have 5,000 people in each Facebook group. And then Mark Zuckerberg found out about this, and God bless him, he lifted the cap. He lifted the cap, and all of a sudden, you had hundreds of thousands of people marching in Cairo. He did his part in helping to change the world by embracing technology, education, and acceptance. And I very humbly challenge our space pioneers, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Sir Richard Branson. With great power comes great responsibility. I challenge them to make education available to everybody on the planet using technology. It's not much of a stretch. If you think about it, 1948 in one year, we sent 200,000 flights over Berlin to drop basic necessities, food and water. Well, the right to unfiltered education is a basic necessity as well. So how can we achieve this? Well, we already have the technology in place, or we will very soon. It might be a rendition of 6G, 7G, 8G, 9G, whatever it might be. But we need to come together and make this happen, as we're all in this together. And so education is a right. Education is freedom. And the late, great Nelson Mandela said that education is the most important weapon we can use to change the world. And I believe it. Computer, tea, Earl Grey, hot. And whoever this old grandfather is, I'd like to have a word with him. <laughs> Captain Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> On Christmas Day, at half past three, brew yourself a cup of tea. I'll think of you, you think of me, while sitting around the Christmas tree. Hallmark, I think. <laughs> so you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will be as one. John Lennon, of course. Technology, education, and acceptance, T-E-A-T, -E can and will change the world if we all choose to embrace it. I hope next time when we meet, we won't be fighting each other. Instead, we'll be drinking tea together. Jackie Chan. Water is the mother of tea, a teapot its father, and fire the teacher. Chinese proverb. So I wrote this speech when I was in Ireland, and I was so inspired by the landscape. And so 
I want to finish it with this. May you always have walls for the winds, a roof for the rain, tea beside the fire, laughter to cheer you, those you love near you, and all your heart might desire. An Irish blessing. Thank you.